So, you know, since this is about community, I figured we figured it would be a good idea to start off on, on you know, some kind of uh, kind and gentle notes. Um, so I assume, you know, people here are familiar with what a post-mortem is. You know, post-mortem is when something has gone wrong and you get together after the, po you know, after the thing has gone wrong to discuss what went wrong. And one thing that people often find out when doing a post-mortem is that we knew that something was going to go wrong, but either someone had figured it out but hadn't shared it well, or, you know, someone had could have thought about it but um, hadn't really believed that things were going to fail as badly. So it turns out the knowledge that something was going to fail usually exists before the thing fails, unless it's a catastrophic surprise accident. That's how it usually works. So the purpose of a pre-mortem is to actually try to figure that out before it happens. The idea is really to get rid of optimism bias by projecting ourselves into the future, um, say 10 years from now, noticing a failure and then going like, okay, it failed. Why do we know from today, but you know, retrospectively with the hindsight of 10 years in the future, how do we know that this, this was going to fail? Um, and so, you know, they, they, I'm not saying that the ones that we listed are like the three only failure modes. I think that, that we, the idea is to invite people to sort of like think retrospectively that way to try to figure out what might be wrong and what we should do about it today before it actually goes wrong. Um, but I think one thing that's pretty clear um, is that if, you know, 10 years from now, IPFS has failed, it, it seems unlikely or implausible that it will be for lack of technical excellence. Um, I think we've all seen, you know, of course in the community, but you know, even even more clearly in the past few days that that um, that this is an absolutely excellent community um, at the technical level, and and even though there are issues, uh, I think we're very confident that they will be conquered. Um, however, we can we can imagine cases in which uh, IPS fast will have failed. So let's imagine it's 2033, um, and you know these are just like three example potential pre-mortems to think about. But the 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 first one is is IPFS has succeeded, you know to some degree, but um, uh, it has been captured by some big tech company or other. So you know pick the your least favorite one. Um, <laughs> And they are, they are basically, for all intents and purposes, owning um, IPFS. And, 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 you know, in the same way that email and, and large parts of the web today, despite being technically or supposedly some degree of, of decentralized, are, uh, you know, captured and owned. And so, you know, that's the failure mode for that first one. If we look back, you know, what, what has failed to lead to that, to that failure mode? Well, one way of thinking about it is that perhaps we didn't think of capture resistance sufficiently well. Um, we, we, you know, there's a tendency in, in our community to imagine that if you make something decentralized, if the tech is decentralized, then everything will just go well because the tech is decentralized. But, you know, the people who work to capture markets don't go like, oh, that tech is decentralized. That's unfortunate. We'll just like go monopolize something else. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, you have to get into a cybersecurity mindset about this and like really threat model the hell out of it because they will keep coming and they will find an exploit and they will eventually monopolize something. And so, you know, we need to build sort of the, the, the community culture of thinking not so much in terms of decentralization, even though that's an important technical property, but in terms of capture resistance so that we keep ourselves honest in terms of whether we're succeeding on that front. So that's one failure mode. Um, a second potential failure mode is the one in which, again, IPFS is maybe even super successful, um, but it is entirely a protocol labs product. You know, maybe we pretend that there's some kind of community and we take input, like we have like developer events and we're like, oh, yes, we listen to you. This is very important. Uh, we will consider it. Um, but it is actually completely owned by, by PL. And this is a failure mode because this is supposed to be, you know, locked open. This is supposed to be uh, a commons thing. 
And how would we reach that kind of failure mode? Well, if we don't take the steps to develop institutional capacity in the community to properly own things and to properly govern things in a way that is, that is open, um, then we could easily progressively slip into that mode, even with good intentions. And we've seen that uh, happen over the, over the past, past you know, decade um, in, in, in tech. And so third failure mode, um, is actually in this case, so this is the one in which IPFS actually doesn't, almost doesn't exist anymore. Um, and it, it, the, the, you know, the, the thing that has happened is at some point, um, there was some kind of absolutely catastrophic usage of, of IPFS, you know, for some major phishing or some, some, some horrendous CSAM um, network or something like that. And the reason that happened is because we as a community didn't take the steps necessary to integrate into the broader uh, institutional ecosystem and play by its rules and actually support people uh, in building good things. So again, this is, this is a, a third case in which the failure is a failure of community and governance, hence why we're here. So now that I've, yes? Do you want to ask, is it, can anyone mention other failures? Yes, this, this is going to be a participatory so session, so you should expect not to sleep in the back. <laughs> How else do we fail? They, they speak in the mic, Boris. How else do we fail? We can fail at delivering the, 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 the decentralization bit. We can be just uh, smoke and mirrors at some point, uh, over time, adding more and more centralized pieces of infrastructure. So. Uh, on the website, it may say we are decentralized, but if you shut down, like Amazon goes down, suddenly content routing does not work, I'd say that's a failure mode that should be on the list. HTTP with extra steps. Yeah, a, a <laughs> inefficient HTTP should not be synonym for IPFS. <laughs> yeah. that, that's a good one. Um, Anyone else? So I think that was a really good Ad, one to Ad, capture. Ad, Ad, Addy has one. Hang on, can, can you wait for the, for the mic, please? Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'll run it, I'll run it. <laughs> it it's okay. It's working? Oh. Yes. Uh, I was going to say something around uh, complexity, so or obfuscation and, and complexity, so that we lack uh, mainstream adoption, especially outside of the West. Yes. Oh. Like, look, every, everyone has uh, everyone has failures now. <laughs> well, keep it keep keep it keep the sharing coming. It's a, it's a plus one on what Eddie's saying. Yeah, like poor market uh, product market fit, right? Like, yeah, sure, we're open source and we scratch our own itches, but we really, you know, have to stand back and say, is this a G Wiz project? Like, oh, great, yeah, we we actually have an interplanetary file system. It's on satellites. It's on Mars. Like, cool. Nobody uses it because it doesn't really solve a problem. Right, because there's like infinitely easier, faster, simpler ways to do the same thing. So, like, there's a tendency for nerds to nerd out, right? And we need to constantly check ourselves. We 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 used to do this at Mozilla. It was like, oh, we could totally do that in the browser, right? <laughs> we can totally do that. Yeah, we we can remotely start a car using a browser. <laughs> But should you, right? Like that's the question, right? That's a failure mode is to not step back and say, should we do this enough? And also that means that we need to be bringing people into the community who provide checks and balances against groupthink. Um, yep, yep. Does, does anyone else want to be pessimistic this morning? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. There's, no, this is definitely very good uh, input. So, you know, in terms of like thinking about it, and again, like I just picked the, the, the three that we thought about, but like the ones that you brought are also important. Um, based on this kind of like pre-mortem exercise, we can figure out the things we want to build and why we want to build community and governance capacity to provide these checks and to provide this input and to keep ourselves honest and on track. Um, and so, you know, this, this, this involves like really figuring out how to avoid capture, um, how to build collective action and how to play well with others. Those are like really important institutional aspects, aspects of, of, of governance. Um, and I think from, from all those that, that we heard, 
also map one way or another into this, right? If we if we have ways of of like getting real community input, and that's not just like a call center input, um, but that's actually people have have voice that translates to action. Um, I think I think we can avoid a, a, a lot of these issues because that's that's how we are smart together. Um, so, you know, in terms of like, um, do, 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 do you know why you should be afraid of the of the French? Because they eat pain for breakfast. Um, so <laughs> um, so um, things we would like to get out uh, of of this, uh, you know, of, the, of this workshop session today are we'd really like. To, to get you know an idea of the pain points uh, regarding governance uh, of the IPFS ecosystem. I mean, you know, a, a lot of you are are involved in it. You know, when you are involved in it, what is painful for you? But also, what is painful in terms of the people who aren't showing up, or the support you're not getting, or you know, things that uh, things that you everyone has been saying yes, we should be doing that for five years, and it still hasn't happened. Um, that kind of painful. Oh, I see, I see Lytle's face. I think I think I, I like struck a chord right we're, there. We're going to talk about browser extensions. <laughs> <laughs> Every community goes through this, right? So it, it, we can we can just like enumerate these things, but we can also solve them. Um, and uh, uh, one thing also is that is the, you know doing governance well and right is something that is uh, very much an art and hasn't been developed into very much of a science yet. And so like sharing um, ideas and thoughts and best practices about how to do it well is also something that, that we'd like to invite today and in the future. I, I think very specifically, uh, no pain, no gain, meaning we actually have to practice governance, which means we will also sometimes fail at governance. Yep. Um, and what we have to do is learn from it so that we can get better at it. I mean, the, you know, in real world governance is, is always absolutely messy and chaotic and horrendous. Um, and so, you know, <laughs> like, yes, we eat gain for breakfast because no, wait, that doesn't work. Um, and so, you know, we want, we, we want to... <laughs> basically use this to strengthen the ways in which we cooperate and work together and like work with other institutions and, and the broader uh, community. And so, you know, just like as, as some open ideation issues, um, the list is actually longer. Boris will, will get to, to uh, a longer list right afterwards. Um, but, you know, one of the questions, you, some of the questions you need to think about when thinking about governance in concrete terms in terms of like how to make it happen is like, what is it that we're governing? Actually, what are the resources that are in the commons? Is it the open source code? Is it the standards? Is it the infrastructure? Um, is it the community culture? It might be all of these things, but it's good to have a clear idea of what it is that we're actually managing through this governance process. There always has to be a resource, right? You're not, you're not like, just like governancing for the fun of like having meetings, right? Um, the other way, the other important thing is like which actors, you know, in terms of like specific positions in the community, like uh, people who use it, people who code on it, people who might have you know opinions about things, people who write, who create logos. I don't know, like different roles. Like which which of these actors do we would we like to see uh, taking which roles in terms of governing things um, is 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 also an important thing. Like who gets to have maybe more say over some parts? Who gets to have like a specific kind of input into this or that kind of resource? Um, and then based on this, like how do we organize these to to achieve the goals that 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 we want to achieve? Um, and so Boris, do you want to jump on the parking lot a bit? Live up here. Yep, you're live now. Live, live. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So. Uh, this was a bit of, of a parking lot uh, pointing out to some some different areas. We've got um, one area that um, Robin and I have prepared and almost given a little update of, of sort of some emergent stuff that we that we see happening. Um, we've got about 15 minutes. We've got five minutes in. So I'd like to take 10 minutes uh, and basically go through some of these things so that we can start gathering this as a list of like, oh, 
are we just going to come and talk about it here or is this something that we're going to kick off and be like how does this flow into other events and meetings and other things that we that we have over time um, standards what does that even mean <laughs> uh, I wanted to put that up there uh, to kick things off because I think we we do uh, multiple kinds of things we do standards that might be happening at the W3C or the ITF that I guess sits in uh, Dietrich in your hands is that correct I mean kind of there's the the ITF section is being discussed so the ITF is it looks like ramping up a multi-formats working group but that is just for multi-formats right it's not there's a tiny fraction of the, of the stack um, and but we do we do need to get our act together in terms of like finding chairs for it um, figuring out who's going to like edit the specs, provide input. At the very least, we need people to, to review the specs um, and, and help with that. So, but that, that is one section. But then there's the, what do we do with all the other specs that we have or that we should have, or all the parts of the stack that exist but don't have a spec? Um, do we just like get Lidl to write all of them? Or, <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or do we develop a system where... where I, I've know. been told that, is, uh, that if I stop fucking around with uh, mascot-shaped stickers and just buckle down and make hexagon-shaped stickers for you can, then like, it'll just automatically be part of the, uh, 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 the IPFS universe. Is this true? Okay, great. Okay, done. Standards equal Lidl Light. plus stickers. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. Fantastic. Um, uh, and I think, yeah, just putting that down there because there's standards, there's standards quotation mark. Like, like, it's both something that we shouldn't be afraid of being like, oh, let's do a pattern of writing stuff down. And again, some of that might come out of a hack project where we like have something that works and then, oh, we want more people working on it. And this tension between I wrote some open source code and cool, can three or four other organizations implement it because they like crabs better than gophers or whatever reason they might want to want to want to do it sort of thing like that. Um, and part of that can be like expectations, right? So for instance, it's not perfect, but when a browser vendor ships a new technology that they haven't even sort of like slightly contributed to the standards process, people scream at them. It doesn't stop them completely, but there's a cultural expectation that if you're going to add a feature, you should at least like pretend to have a spec and give it to the community, which is better than not even bothering. And I, I don't think we have that muscle developed yet. Um, I think, you know, it, it, we don't want to like, stop people from coming up with ideas and trying stuff out but like if you're going to add a significant feature and put it um you know somehow in public where it's going to be used by people it's probably a good idea to develop the expectation that it should be at least the outline of some kind of markdown spec and we make it pretty easy for people to write specs so um i think i think that should that should be an, an expectation that we that we grow to develop uh thoughts pains delight around this word standards you should add this into your threat model for capture because i've seen so many open source projects who started at the standards place and suddenly microsoft comes in and is like oh we're building ion right we're gonna do this thing you call decentralized identity and uh, you, since you guys haven't, you know, since this group has not actually written a spec, there's no reference implementation, we're going to push this standard in a direction that makes it only Microsoft who can do it, right? Um, yep. So I think the one thing to keep in mind is we have a lot of technical advancement already. We have a lot of specs we still need to write. And don't look at Lytle. Well, he just he, he 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 literally just said we should write some more specs in the previous meeting. Um, but anyway, there is this tension of do we implement it first and then write it down and show the world that this solves a problem and and this is what we're going to do, or do we go to the standards body and incorporate feedback as we design? There's always tension there. I think the rule of thumb is yes for protocols no for implementations or no, no for anything that would be considered implementation detail right um and that's where something like the decentralized identity you know in the ccg working group just went off 
they they went down the down the rabbit hole of all these little implementation details and uh i don't know i don't know that anybody uses ccg standards in, you know much i mean we have tiny little bits of dids here right but they have all kinds of problems because of it maybe like um potential mitigation here is to not just write text not just write prose but also have a a system when there's an expectation of having a working code with your spec proposal, kind of like reference implementation, and then as a part of the pro ratification process, uh, have expectation of some sort of a test suit that's like vendor agnostic. And we are trying to prototype uh, a process like that for the gateway specs, where we have um, expectation you, there's a spec, so one thing, you need to have a spec. Then you can have uh, IPIPs, uh, uh, improvement proposals, deltas against the spec. And when you want to propose a change, you come in with code, and then as a part of ratification process, you are expected to also add, uh, bring test fixtures uh, to this uh, vendor agnostic test suit. For the gateway, it's fairly easy, HTTP. Uh, for other things, it may be more tricky, but I think uh, this is a forcing function uh, for people uh, from the wider ecosystem to get an early warning where there's a capture attempt. Because uh, the moment I'm not able to like test it with the provided fixtures because it relies on some centralized thing or some proprietary thing that I'm not able to implement because of patents or whatever. That's the early warnings. Uh, that's the time when you have a warning before you ratify the spec, before it gets like too far. I agree. You know, that, that, that's a good point. I mean, it, it's certainly true that, that uh, defending against capture in, in, in standards is, is a problem that we sadly have a lot of experience with <laughs> based on, on the W3C, for instance. Um, I, I do think that that ties to um, the, a broader discussion about, about how to organize the community and that um, what happens when things start to become successful and how do you scale your governance to match success? Um, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the time you see projects that begin and the governance is basically just norms you know, you have norms of like how you're supposed to contribute and how you're supposed to participate. And that's great so long as no one's like income relies on it. And so long as it, it's not too successful, you know, like I don't want to do a thing that will make, you know, Boris angry at me. So I, I, I do the right thing. Um, but at some point it becomes big, um, like my income depends on it. And if it depends on doing something that makes Boris unhappy, well, maybe that makes me sad, but I'll still do it. Um, and then you get something that falls apart and that is easily, easily captured because you need to go from norms to rules and something that has a lot more enforcement capacity in it. So, um, I wanted, I wanted to point out actually like, so that's an excellent proposal of, of talking about that process. Who funds that? <laughs> wait, wait, the, the, wait, Mike, 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 Mike. Yep. Um, um I'm an indie hacker who would like to do a new thing. Yeah. And I can't possibly do all of those things uh, um, as, the, as the first step. I, and I don't think we should even dig into it. It's the, this is the like prompt of like, that sounds awesome. So I can get some contributions to get all of that stuff uh, done that's not me, the indie hacker, or other things like that. And this is some of the tensions of where some of this lives uh, and what uh, base infrastructure is. To what you were saying in terms of the, like the diff and the other things like that, what we really found is I think the ITF model of rough consensus and running code is a good starting point. We, were, we went to the diff, uh, we'd done a bunch of early stuff with, with DIDs and we went there um, and, there, and uh, like did a demo from them. They're like, oh wait, this is working? I'm like, <laughs> yes. Um, and then we got into some discussions. We found like a lot of people there um, had thought a lot about identity, a bunch of other things like that. But it was it was, it was theoretical, and so they didn't. We didn't actually have a partner to uh, do, for instance, interop te testing with, where the expectation was kind of like, well, we'll code it, we'll we'll write it all down, including some of us who had written code. We're like, uh, that is not going to be useful to implement or hard to implement in in code. So some of those tensions where I would say. 
um, almost there, like uh, start very early on and saying uh, like, I guess intent to implement is sort of a thing that like I almost, it's like just something that I, I know I, lots of people who are more into the W3C are like, like twitching when I say that phrase sort of thing. But I'm like, could we use some patterns and say like, oh, I'm gonna stick up my hand. Yes, my org group individual indie hacker would also like to run, deploy or code X. Um, and, and that kicks things off of saying like, it's not just a, a single entity as an example. Yeah, and uh, I think, I, I'm not sure if uh, that's what you, where you're going, uh, but I think parts of the standards, uh, it's like specs plus a framework of, of testing that it's not, there's like no lock in around this like test framework. Yes. So the thing is, and yet another example, the gateway conformance tests we are uh, prototyping the, the entire, like the, the design decisions that we wrote down was, uh, I should, everyone, uh, we should be able to like run this on uh, like the canonical place where people can compare implementations. Then each implementation it can run it in their own infra and then every end user could use it to uh, empower themselves uh, and verify products that provide gateways. So uh, the, se the test, uh, the test uh, capture uh, and making sure, log, like making sure it's like locked open uh, and uh, not tied to a specific implementation is very important. Uh, we, uh, we struggle with that because the gateway implementations right now are mostly PL driven, uh, but the, through the project RIA and other uh, places we are able to like, at least we have multiple uh, implementations with different limitations. So uh, that's a starting point. Yeah. And, and, and tests are a good way of getting community participation because you know hackers can can easily like go like oh this is a test suite I'm, I'm I understand how this works and I can contribute something um, and in general there's I, I've seen quite a fair bit of success in standards worlds where you make it easy for people to contribute tests when they find a bug um, and they do because it's a great way of getting other people to fix the bug and to do the work for you so that 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 is a, a helpful vector for sure. Uh, so we've gone deep on the first one. What I'd actually like to do uh, is do a speed run of adding a little more color to each one of these things mean, and then also just getting a kind of show of hands of which of these things are interesting that we might dig into. Because uh, a lot of these are just prompts for us to be like, oh, right, these are some people who are interested in this stuff. Let's, let's keep talking about it. Uh, so network operations, um, and kind of put bad bits in there directly to, to, to say uh, what, what uh, Robin said about like, oh, you know, we don't want um, uh, the main IPFS commons network. Um, I, does anyone, I, I call it mainnet, um, borrowing from, um, blockchains who have this concept. And so to, and I, I, I open question, is there, is there a label for the main public reachable IPFS commons network? Oh, that's like an open slot. We are looking for a name for DHT, but now it seems that we also need a name for the, the, the entire network, so we need two names. And, and logos. Do, do, we, do we need two names? Because do we need to name the DHT separately from the... I, I don't know. <laughs> there, there was a proposal to call it Baba Yaga yesterday. <laughs> Um, so plus one for vilification, uh, <laughs> li literally, <laughs> uh, awesome. That's really, that's really, so, and then there's the actual network operations where some of the stuff that, um, Rob and I have been looking at in the decentralized data compliance group, they'll talk about this afternoon is like, okay, real companies that are registered in real countries are going to run real servers, uh, as part of stuff that they run and it, where they operate those things, they have compliance needs. Uh, hey, instead of everyone having to do this all by themselves, can we cooperate and be, help each other out so not everyone is starting from, from scratch, including some shared compliance things around which bad bits we might not uh, be allowed to serve. So this is a guard uh, as a community against the vilification failure. Yep, yep. Right? And I think we're seeing the IPFS operators group kind of reboot and that'll hopefully kind of find a home in there. But they're probably not that not the same set of people who are looking at compliance. So, uh, uh, look that. I mean, the, the two work together, yeah. but yeah. Uh, open source governance, uh, a placeholder that is more about the code and goes into, in the current model that we have, where lots of code gets written by PL. Um, what is PL's approach to saying to, uh, taking feature requests, 
uh, or taking PRs or not taking PRs. There's a bunch of different ways to do this and what this looks like. Some of it is once again tied to funding uh, as a form of power uh, that you have to think about uh, as well, uh, which is why I have that one as the next thing. We have a bunch of things in motion. Um, there's an IPFS fund being formed. Uh, Addy, is that going to be talked about here? <laughs> There's more than one? <laughs> okay. Uh, is, is that on the schedule anywhere? Uh, there's a little bit. Good. Can you, yeah. Mics. Um, there's a little bit touched upon in the keynote. So we have two sort of divergences. We have one that is the traditional IPFS fund, which I'm dubbing the Web 2.0 version. And then we're building out a Web 3 version, which is all on chain. So it's like, based off of staking me mechanism and pooling um, on GILF. And then those will uh, be fractionalized using quadratic voting or some kind of weighted voting scheme with governance um, so that everything is on chain and essentially trackable and traceable for both the community and the funders. With the idea being that the funding will be completely decentralized so it's not coming from a single entity. And the hopes there is that we can uh, then fund and allocate money to higher risk, uh, higher reward projects. So I, I don't know if that answers the question, but there's sort of two tracks right now um, that, that, that go in, par in parallel. That's amazing. Like, again, this entire track is a honeypot for people with information <laughs> and people with questions, right? So even though like, oh, we need two names for the thing, um, um, we're, we're having it recorded. So this is the kind of thing where I'd love to follow up and be like, where do we go to follow along find out more what is the Filecoin Slack channel or, you know, hashtag on Blue Sky to follow or, or whatever. So that's awesome. Thank you. Uh, evangelism and ground game. So that's that's something that Uni wants to cover a fair bit this afternoon and she's not here yeah. yet. Cause... In, in a couple of different ways, which is, again, so to what you were saying in terms of like it has to be useful to people generally, which might start with cool technical hack that incites a community to, to keep going and sort of thing, but then has to transition to exactly what, what Eddie was saying about like, hey, how about we use some languages other than English and think about places other than the Western world? I had an amazing discussion uh, with some um, uh, uh, Mayan activists at IPFS camp, um, and they told me a little bit of, of like, once we translate it into our language, here's our, some of our thoughts on how IPFS is or is not connected to some other things and how it makes us feel. And I'm like, super interesting, right? So all of these, like, we have to do all of these things to some degree. Uh, um, and some of this is like, great. So there's these two parts of governance is in part the like who decides or who prioritizes. And community is the in part, great. How do we work together and do some collective action around it? Uh, instead of just single individual or, or, or single org. Yep. I was just going to point out that the cool thing about the open source governance and evangelism and ground game, and, and to some degree funding, these are well-trodden paths, right? There's been a lot of success in the last 20 years for, you know, like Mozilla, Linux Foundation, lots of these. Or I, and then, you know, I, even the IEEE is really good at this. And so... I think we should make sure that we go at this not thinking we're going to make a PL flavored version of it. I think we should definitely maybe organize a conversation around doing like a SWAT on what Mozilla did or what Linux Foundation did and pull from them, like learn from the people who've gone before us. Um, because there, we certainly have something to add to this, you know, what Addy's talking about, you know, uh, cutting new paths into Web3 funding and how do we do voting and all, how do we do everything on chain and, and uh, uh, transparently. But to get there, right, we, we're, there's so much we're going to need to do that has already been figured out, yep. right? So let's not spin our wheels on that. Let's work on, you know, the cool stuff that we can add. <laughs> um, your Laptop did not like staying. Um, yeah, completely agree. I mean, two, two examples come, come to mind there. Um, uh, not necessarily fully successful, but that have interesting properties at least. Um, one is uh, Wikipedia developed a pretty serious like ground game. And um, 
everyone knows how bureaucratic and complicated it is to actually make Wikipedia function. And that was a key part in getting, you know, an entire community to understand a very complex set of rules to build governance around a shared system that, you know, may be bureaucratic, may be difficult and painful, but generally works more than it doesn't. Um, and the other is ISOC. Um, where they manage a pretty significant budget um, annually. And I think it's a very significant chunk, maybe half, like at least a third, possibly more than half of the budget is managed by ISOC chapters. Um, and so I'm not convinced that the community representation they have is very representative, uh, but at least they figured out a way of like get, doing this kind of collective budgeting. I actually... 80% disagree with almost everything that you said. Um, um, here, here's what I've seen having practiced a bunch of this stuff 20 years ago when open source was still a radical act. I think those orgs figured it out from the early 2000s to today. What I'm seeing is essentially open source 2.0 where a lot of people have come up with out it being radical and don't actually know how to practice. Another point is you said PL. I believe you meant PLN, of course, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> this is a problem that we generally have in the end part. We don't talk about the end part, um, in part because of point four of funding, where most of the locus of that uh, lies. Sure. Um, so, uh, and I think that a lot of the new stuff coming from Web3 is super, uh, is, is new and, and no one really has it figured out and there's some new techniques in there, right? So how do we split these things and go like, double down on the things that we know that work that might target certain types of orgs. Or I actually see that like a bunch of those techniques work in the global northern west and pretty much don't in the global south uh, and southeast Asia. Um, uh, and that's, that, that's really the arc of really like, oh no, the, inter the internet is now worldwide and we, our ground game actually has to be global uh, uh, and not just English centric, right? Uh, so I'm not disagreeing more saying like, yes and, uh, just what I was thinking about is exactly what you were saying. Like, if you had me <clears throat> write down a list of the things that I admire from previous organizations, I think the people who know anything about Mozilla would say the one thing they are really good at is translating. You know, they have their, all their documentation and all their educational material in like 80 different languages. Yep. Okay. So I agree with you, Boris. Like, I'm not trying to be sort of like the global West North centric. In fact, there are some things about some of these organizations that are so good about the global South and like getting it into places. You know, um, the, the IEEE does a really good ground game with institutions, educational institutions. Yep. They're like a PhD factory. And there's so much of what we're doing that it has unopened or has open-ended questions, like things that could fund or, or fuel and also fund a lot of research. And so anyway, that's what I'm thinking. I think you and I agree. We're saying the same thing. I'm not thinking like, oh, you know, let's throw giant parties in, in New York city. I'm thinking let's, <laughs> my vision here is, is having a presence on the ground pretty much everywhere in the world <clears throat> with people who are speaking in a negative language and teaching people how to build with this, so. That, that's an amazing mission statement, and I think very good for UD's uh, yep. session. Yep. Uh, Thank you for pushing back, though. <laughs> I love it. Uh, of course, we're over time now, so um, should we, let's quickly flip through the, the working group. It's working. So, <laughs> Having gone through, so no, one, one thing that we wanted to bring forward um, here is that there's this sort of like novel idea, that novelish idea that's been floating around and where people are sprouting up working groups here and there. Um, and it's great because like we should be working and in groups. Um, so you figure out that that, that that should be a good idea. But um, uh, the purpose of working groups is, is you know, to get us like, cross organizationally to, to, to figure things out and they can have different types of approaches to different things. Some of them are much more like uh, pragmatic solving things. Others are like, let's organize towards a mission. Um, but uh, we haven't really 
formalized this in any way or figured out like what are the rules and what does a working group need to be. Um, so I think it, it, we should be thinking as a, as, as a community about like what what do we expect from a working group and what should we bring into working groups. Um, and so the, they're basic you know, building blocks, like it should have a charter, or it should be there for a purpose. Um, you, it should, it should also know from the start when it stops to exist, because you don't want these things to just live on forever for no reason. Um, uh, you know, they should have like some communication channels that are where the community will expect to find them. Like today, if you wanted to find out all of the working groups that exist around the IPFS thing, um, I have no fucking clue how you'd, you would go about it. And I'm not even sure that if we put all of our brains together in this room, we would succeed in listing all of them. I think we'd probably forget some. Uh, there are probably some that we just don't know about. Well, you, you have access to the secret V2 notion where all of this information is stored, don't you? <laughs> I thought that was in the secret V3 notion. That was a PL joke from someone who's on the outside. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, they, they, none, none of this should be shocking or particularly revolutionary, but like, this is like basically how it's done and the kind of thing that we, we should like figure out how to normalize and have a list of them, for instance, and like how maybe they could share a code of conduct and stuff like that. Um, and so this, this, is, this brings like the, 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 the question that's always horrendous is like, do we need standards for standards? Um, <laughs> and the answer sadly is usually yes. <laughs> Much as you want to punch yourself in the face as you say these things, but we probably need a working group working group. Um, <laughs> of some kind, <laughs> not that it should be an intensive amount of work. Ideally, this should be like a very lightweight affair. Um, but, you know, some group that basically sets out these things, uh, you know, uh, when do you start new one? Where do we put the list of all of them? Uh, what is the, what, what tools should they have and that kind of stuff? Uh, how do you announce and promote your working group so that it's not just you and the friends you met at the bar last night who had a great idea, but also other people in the community who might be interested? Um, and really, yeah, the idea is like, how do we make this an effective structure that people can like get off the shelf, use to solve a problem, and put back on the shelf when the problem is solved and, and not become some big bureaucratic nightmare. Moving on, on Enrique, what we're going to do next is, uh, so we've got a channel in IPFS Slack. Um, I will take a bunch of these open things and some of the notes that I captured and, and tag some names of people, get a HackMD up so that we can use that throughout the day for some of these other things along with communicating with all the speakers, which I did not do ahead of time because we were a little running a little late in um, the massive atom in the sky last night. That's great that this is recorded. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Enrique is up next. <laughs>